Hey everybody, welcome back to Smart Robots Review, the show that reviews robotics and other fantastic tech from around the world and out of this world. I'm your host Elias, and on this episode, we will learn how students from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee are working with NASA to learn rocket science and conduct experiments to understand what happens to DNA when exposed to cosmic radiation. This is another in a series of many episodes I've prepared after visiting Milwaukee's Discovery World Museum during the Apollo 11 50th anniversary celebration on July 20th. You guys ready? Let's kick it off. Welcome to Smart Robots Review. Spot. I'm a senior and team lead at University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Uh, I'm the team lead on our high-powered rocketry team, uh, and I'm also working um, on our SEDS, which is Student for Exploration and Development of Space. Uh, we are a chapter at our university, um, national chapter. Um, basically, students who are really passionate and interested about space and, and how it works, and what are we doing there, uh, what kind of technologies do we use, what sciences do we use to explore it. Um, That's so, exciting. Yeah, it is. It's, it's awesome. And so at our, at our school specifically, our programs really focus around rockets. How do they work? Um, how do we build them? Design them? What do we use them for? And then uh, also just um, different parts of human spaceflight and how are we going to be affected in spaceflight. So our two things that we have here are, um, this is part of the Rocksat C. This is part of the Rocksat C program. Okay. Um, Basically, every state has a space grant, and so we are sponsored by the Wisconsin Space Grant. Uh, it's a educational um, out a program that focuses on the learning and development of uh, science and STEM-related activities for students. And so they sponsor us financially as well as uh, with su technical support. And uh, so through the Rocksat program, we're asked to design a payload which goes on a sounding rocket with a bunch of other schools. And uh, basically we're studying the effect of cosmic radiation on DNA and on humans in general and, you know, and just how things are gonna be affected. So here, this payload has, um, uh, this payload has, uh, <laughs> this has uh, squid, squid DNA. Squid DNA? Yes, jellyfish, sorry, okay. jellyfish DNA. Um, and we basically coat it with different types of uh, shielding, different types of radiation shielding. And that tells us, you know, which kinds of radiation are we blocking um, and are we being affected at it. So basically this payload is built and then put into a smaller section. It's put into the sounding rocket with all the other schools from different around the country. And then they launch the rocket up into space. And then the rocket comes apart, is up there for a little bit, falls back down, we recover it in the ocean. Uh, we take it back, take our payload out, and then we uh, basically look at our different sensors. You know, we have a Geiger counter. It looks at different types of radiation. Um, you know, we're looking at, uh, we take the DNA out of the capsules, we take it into a lab, and we look at, you know, what's going on with it. Uh, is it destroyed? Is it still healthy? Is it replicating? Um, so that's the main focus of this project, which is, which is very fascinating and it's very fun. So what kind of, what other electronics do you have on there? Can you talk about that? Yeah, so um, different electronics we have on here. Uh, we have Geiger counters. We have um, for which radiation, are right. yeah for radiation. Um, we have uh, we're gonna have a uh, Arduino on here. Uh, Arduino basically compositing a lot of the information, um, putting it all together so we can process it in a way that we can see it and use it. Okay. Um, we're going to have uh, a gyroscope, uh, an altimeter, something that calculates speed, mm -hmm. velocity, how so high are we? All that telemetry. Yep, telemetry data, uh, GPS location. How do you make sure all that survives the fall back to Earth. I just have a really sturdy, <laughs> sturdy canister. Okay. Um, we have uh, metal canisters which surround this, and then it's uh, basically there's a, a ten day period where we go down to uh, the Wild Spice facility oh, yeah. in Virginia, yeah. and uh, there's integration of the payload. They in inspect it. Actual NASA uh, engineers inspect it. Uh, they make sure it's secure enough. Um, you know, really. There's a lot of uh, tape involved, a lot of Kevlar. Uh, you know, duct tape saved uh, a lot of astronauts early on and we still use it all the time. Um, once the payload is secure in itself, then we put it into the capsule. Um, that's a metal container that's pretty sturdy. 
Uh, and then that is also integrated into a payload section of the sounding rocket. Okay. And so that section is also pretty secure and it's, you know, pressurized, make sure it's very, you know, contained. So that's the main focus of this and very that's how we, we make sure at least it falls down into the water and uh, it's got a parachute, uh, slow it down and descend. So what's next for your project? Uh, a lot of times what we do with this is we uh, just alter our experiment and try to figure out what did we do last year, what do we do different this year, how are we going to get better information, yeah. uh, new information just altering the experiment really. Um, this year we got different types of shielding in order to, uh, to protect from different types of cosmic rays. Uh, last year we just kind of focused on one, um, you know, gamma and beta, different types of radiation like that. And that was this year's change. Um, you know, we're not really sure we're going to go from here. Uh, it, the space is the limit. Yeah, space is limitless. Yeah. So uh, the data that we're going to look at, we haven't finished our final report yet. So we we'll look at the data and see where it is, to see what happened with the DNA. Um, we'll kind of come up with ideas and that means for us for the next year. Second thing that we do every year, uh, we do this every year, both competitions, is the Midwest High Power Rocket Competition. And that's where we, it's a national, this year international actually, we had our first team from Egypt uh, who joined us. Um, but we go up to Minnesota, where the Minnesota Space Grant sponsors teams from all over the country. And uh, they give us parameters, and they just say build a rocket, make sure you can complete these tasks, and you're free to design and build how you want. Okay. Um, you know, and so we raise as much funding as we can. Uh, last year, we built and designed this one. This one, the main goal was to control the roll and pitch in flight. And so we, what we did is we designed um, inside, uh, let's see. We designed a container, I know it's kind of dark. There is a motor right there. Yep. And so that motor, there's a weight that is attached to that motor. And then we have sensors inside, uh, telemetry data, and that data is then wired into the motor. And so if the rocket ever turns off course based on what we want, uh, the motor will turn the weight and the rotational momentum will correct its course. Um, this was also a uh, single stage but dual deploy. Mm -hmm. So that means that we have a parachute coming out from underneath and we have emergency parachute inside of our motor. Um, it's an emergency motor ejection charge. And then we have another parachute which comes out, the nose cone comes out, and the parachute attached to that uh, it helps slow us down. This rocket was a little bit heavier and we, didn't, we weren't required to go as high, so um, we weren't going as fast. But in comparison, this is a prototype we built this year, um, which was meant to go supersonic. Oh. So uh, it's light, extremely light, very small, and uh, we actually had a custom designed fin can. Did which you launch it? This uh, rocket we yes, launched? Yes, yes, we launched, um, and actually our first launch we lost the rocket. Oh no. Because it went too fast, and uh, our, our data wasn't able to keep up with it. So this was a second iteration that we built, um, and the fin can was custom designed. It's actually printed, 3D printed, PET. So it's industrial grade, Okay. Um, very light, very strong. And when you're going supersonic at those speeds, the stability is the most important thing of your rocket. I mean, just like in actual rockets that the NASA uses and other organizations, when you're going and launching, the stability, especially at certain points in the launch, are extremely important. Okay. So the fins were key for our design. Um, so you say you 3D printed this? Yes. I'm familiar with PLA and ABS. What's PET? Uh, PET is just a uh, industrial grade um, plastic or resin. Yeah, plastic or? resin. Uh, I am Perry Spot. I am a senior and team lead at University of Wisconsin Milwaukee. Uh, I'm the team lead on our high-powered rocketry team. Uh, and I'm also working um, on our SEDS, which is Student for Exploration and Development of Space.